Okay, so today I'm going to explain how to quiet the mind. Um, and I will preface this by saying that sometimes the mind turns up its volume simply because you're not breathing enough, um, because you have low energy, like low prana, um, because there's spiritual energy uh, purifying your chakras, and so content is being purged from the chakras. Um, I think people have noticed a lot of times before they have a big breakthrough, their emotions and mind gets louder and moves more because spiritual energy is literally kind of pouring through a chakra where all these misunderstandings are being released. So the like the amplitude or the intensity of whatever's in there gets louder. So that's something to be aware of. But I just want to say, look, there's like this myth that, well, the mind just does what it does. And, you know, and the other thing is, you know, we're picking up information, right, from the universe. And I'm going to kind of introduce to you how to tell when you're feeling something that's you and something that's not you. And I'll unpack that more fully in another video. But the mind is actually quite... It, you can quiet it in a simple way. You just have to know how it works and what it's doing. <laughs> so when your mind is racing, and I've said this a million times, when your mind is racing, you are avoiding a feeling. You are avoiding a feeling. So your mind is going a million miles an hour because there's a vibration going on in your body, right? Often in the solar plexus, which is the, the personal mind. There's a... Um, a feeling of unsafety, there's a feeling of uh, threat. And so if you're not, if there's not presence in that moment, you won't be able to feel it right there. So it rises up into the mind and it becomes a story. So let's say it's abandonment, right? It's abandonment. Okay, so you have this fear of aloneness. You have like a really like strong fear of aloneness and so it gets triggered when maybe a friend or an intimate partner doesn't call you back, text you back. You know, you wait anxiously looking at your phone for an answer. You were so excited to be sharing with a person and when they're not responding to you or perhaps when they're lying to you, um, this starts moving. Boop, 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 boop. So <clears throat> what happens is if you don't stop right there, right, in presence, that, that movement will stop. Because the reason why it's moving is because it believes it's separate from safety. And you are safety. You are the consciousness, right? You can give it the experience of safety by breathing and slowing down and just giving it attention, demonstrating safety, not learning, not reading a book about how to be safe, not learning about the nervous system. Giving it a real experience of safety means you just allow it to be there, open to it, and give it the light of your attention and the softness of your body and your presence. So... If your mind is going off, right, I've talked about in another video, pay attention to the dialogue because the dialogue is an echo of a perspective that you have that if you saw it clearly, it would dissolve. So a really good example is if you are always explaining yourself, if you are always defending yourself, if you are always rationalizing to other people in your mind, like why you are allowed to have the perspective you have, why you're allowed to exist basically. Because the belief is basically the what's creating that dialogue is I don't believe that my existence is valid. Like I don't accept myself. Like there's a deep lack of self-acceptance that rises up into the mind and creates this echo of storytelling, storytelling, storytelling about how defending how well I know what I feel and like I know what I sensed in that situation and I know that I did the right thing and defending your decisions because why would you defend a decision unless you didn't trust yourself? So how would you quiet that down? 
it's not about just meditating or observing it. It's about what, where is it being generated from? It's being generated from lack of self-acceptance, lack of self-trust. So of course, what's the antidote to that whole chain? It's self-trust. It's saying to yourself, like, people may or may not believe me or understand me, but I know what I feel and I honor what I feel. That's the end of the story. That's it. People interact with me from their, uh, their perspective, their understanding, their level of self-realization, and I honor the way that I receive, digest, perceive information. And that's the end of the story. And so what happens? Boom. The, this thing that was the reaction, the trigger, that was actually an echo of a belief of separation or a belief of lack of self-acceptance, the whole chain has been addressed. So there will no longer be chatter about it. Okay, so that's one way to quiet the mind. <sighs> Pay attention to the stories that are rising up in your mind and ask yourself, go to their source. What is the source of this train of thought? What do I believe about myself? And what's the antidote to that, right? Let's say, let's say you're always blaming Let's say you're always, um, you know, projecting that something in the world is more powerful than you. A situation, it could be debt, it could be divorce, it could be a lawsuit, it could be a medical condition. If you hear yourself in your mind saying, well, the fucking doctors, they did a hack job and they messed me up forever or this asshole stole my money or... So you're listening to yourself, right? And I'm not saying telling you to invalidate the perspective. I'm, I'm asking you to listen to the perspective so that you can go to the source of what's causing the mental chatter. So let's say you're always blaming, 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 blaming. And really, part of you really believes how something has caused something. Somebody in your external world has caused something in you, which is a lie. Okay, we are simply projecting our own impressions and distortions onto our world, hopefully to take them as an opportunity to see that we have believed a lie and that we can correct the lie. So we're blaming, 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 blaming. Okay, so what's that about? Well, that, that could be many layers of things, right? For one thing, you believe that you don't create your reality. Right, but that doesn't really kind of unlock, you know, lots of people hear that phrase, okay, I accept I do create my reality. But that doesn't really unlock it. So go into it more. So why am I blaming? Why am I so angry at that person? Maybe it's a person who previously gave you a resource like money or love. Okay, that love, you can't really source love from other people, but from one of your perspectives, you got something from someone. Okay, again, whether it's like friendship, attention, money, advice. And when they withdraw it and you get angry at them or what you are getting from them seems to disappear now. So what you believe is they are my source. <laughs> they are my source. They are my source of abundance. They are my source of love. They are my source of X, Y, and Z. So what's the antidote to that? The antidote to that is, okay, the, the truth is, I am creator. I am creator. I am God. And it's easier to anchor this understanding in your chakra system if you meditate in the void and you actually are somatically and experientially familiar with the vibration of infinite potential, right? You can hear that you're infinite potential. You can learn it. But unless you make contact, unless you make conscious contact with that vibration, it's gonna take you longer to convince yourself that that's the truth. So, okay, so you're blaming, 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 blaming. So the reality is that part of you doesn't know that it's the creator. And that's different than saying, I create my reality. Okay, I accept that. No, it's like really like going into like this part of you that is projecting all of its lack of power and lack of self-realization onto the world and saying to it like, in a feeling way, like, wait, I am creator. <laughs> like everything that's going on in my external world 
is just an appearance. The way that I feel about myself in the situation is my level of self-realization in a practical way. So if you're having a lot of blameful chatter, right? Part of you does not yet know that you are creator. I am creator. I am creator. I am the intelligence that creates the universe. Part of me believes that somebody else is my source. Another way you could say this to yourself is I am my source. I am my source. And that feels so good. That feels so good to say to yourself, that is not my source. 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 I don't need to manipulate my environment. I don't need to be seductive. I don't need to lie. I don't need to, um, you know, a lot of times wounded female energy will be like, you know, seductive or like really sweet or like Bambi-ish to get what it wants. And that is a result of, of not realizing your self as what you really are. So how do you quiet the mind? First of all, you inquire into the source of the dialogue. Second of all, you stop avoiding your feelings. And how do we avoid our feelings? I've, I've given kind of a map of like, First, you stop avoiding. We are escape artists, okay? We are escape artists. And ask yourself, how do I escape? Do I keep myself busy? Do I um, act overly concerned about something? Um, do I feel inferior or superior? Anything that separates you from peace and homeostasis is probably you avoiding a feeling because when you feel threatened, you're in separation, you're in, you're in your survival self, you feel threatened, so you start compensating. So you might start trying to like overly take care of your environment, like some people are very mothering, mothering. Um, some people try to fix everybody's problems, the hero. Okay, some people like really are in this victim mentality or damsel in distress mentality. Some people, they really turn up their warrior energy. And I'm not saying that any of these energies are bad, but they are a reaction to a feeling of helplessness. <laughs> because what you're trying to avoid is feeling, is feeling how a part of you feels which is out of control, powerless, unsafe. So think about it, like when you feel unsafe, you start compensating, you start compensating for things. And here's another thing, right? How do you know when you're feeling your own thing whether versus whether you're feeling somebody else's energy? Well, if you're feeling, you know, I'm going to unpack this in another video, but if it's about you and your own misunderstandings of separation, it's, it's closer to your chakra system, which means when something happens in your life and you get knocked out of homeostasis, right, you start feeling threatened. Maybe your stomach starts to flood like, chemicals that make you feel like really scared or nervous or hot or you start ticking or you start spinning that's how you know it's you because you what we're trying to heal in ourselves is our feelings of separation and our feelings of threat and our feelings of fear and our feelings of aloneness and our feelings of shame so anything that knocks you out of equanimity is yours because you can feel something clearly, right? You, somebody can walk in a room and you can start feeling a tightness in your body. But in that situation, it's just a sensation. It's not, there's no emotional reaction on top of it. When you have an emotional reaction to a, to a sensation, that's your stuff. Like I said, like if you walk into a party and you feel, you know, some weird stuff going on. Maybe people are doing drugs, Okay, so you notice that. Then on top of that, you start feeling like nervous and like really scared and like, well, that's yours because you've been knocked out of homeostasis. So now you feel like, oh, instead of realizing you can just leave and get away from these people, <laughs> part of you believes it's stuck and like, oh, I have to be in this weird situation and I don't feel safe and I have no choices. Okay, so that's how you know it's yours. So... Quieting the mind is really simple. So when you stop avoiding, you can actually feel what part of you feels like, what part of you perceives, how it understands reality. Um, and so once you've identified clearly how you, like all the ways that not just you, how the ego avoids feeling, whether it's thinking incessantly, um, maybe exercising too much, um, 
maybe like anything that where you feel like you're distracting yourself from something you know for me I I love traveling but there were times where I could just feel that like my need to like go on a trip and be away and was because I was trying to avoid something avoid a feeling or I could tell that you know on days where I was less busy I would feel this kind of dread feeling because I know <clears throat> that it was easier for me to get through my day at some point when I had more going on. So that told me like, oh, okay, part of me is, is afraid of like stillness and lack of activity because there's something that I'm going to have to feel if I want to be free. So you have to learn, like you have to study yourself. Everything that I say about psychology, I have read a couple of psychology books. I've read a lot of spiritual books. But everything that I know about the mind, I have observed in myself. And that's the truth. Because I realize that if I don't see this, if I don't see it in myself, and if I don't really deeply understand it, I, I can't go beyond it. So I've been watching all the movements of the mind and how we try to escape and how we try to cover up our feelings. And that's why I'm, what I'm sharing with you. And I'm sharing with you that yes, you can quiet your mind because the parts of you that are talking all day are the parts of you often that feel separate from life and they're trying to get your attention. So, okay, stop avoiding. Map it out. How do you avoid just feel you'll feel this thing like oh i'm avoiding something i'm avoiding something when yet whenever you try to push yourself whenever you try to compensate and control your environment you're avoiding a feeling often of like nothingness often of aloneness aloneness is kind of a gate that we have to go through to really like die to our old self so okay so you're not avoiding anymore now get really intimate with your with your emotions with your emotions because if you let yourself feel like oh my god somebody shattered me something that somebody did actually shattered my soul and i feel just destroyed oh let yourself see that let yourself feel that because if you really let yourself feel that oh my god like for example I, for a long time, was very sad about the fact that I left a marriage where I had not yet had children because I was so looking forward to having children. And part of me, my, my heart was broken. Like, my heart was broken. And when I just really let myself see, part of me feels, what is that about? Well, part of me feels like, what is having children about? It's about joy. It's about, um, it's about fulfillment for me. Fulfillment for part of me. It's about a deep sense of joy and fulfillment and connection. And so part of me believed that the only way that my source of deep fulfillment and connection and love and joy was that. And seeing that, seeing that I believed that, seeing that basically part of me believed like I don't have a reason to live unless I have children. Part of me believed that. And I realized that I was avoiding this feeling of like, of aloneness, of, of like, wow, I am in a way here on my own. And, and, and part of me deeply wants to know that I am my own source of joy and fulfillment and love and connection. And so if I, if, if I didn't let myself see that, right? And how did I let myself see that? I let myself feel my lungs collapsing. I let myself feel my shortness of breath. I let myself feel all the stuff going on in my body. And I inquired like, what is this about? Well, this is about that I believe that an experience that, my, that I want in this world is the source of those things that I truly want, which is connection, joy, love, family. And although, you know, you have to have a physical family in order to have a family, but the feeling of wholeness is not something you need anything in your life to feel. So this was a feeling of brokenness. This is a feeling of, of incompleteness, right? A feeling of lack, a deep feeling of lack. And how would that show up in my mental chatter? Well, it would show up in my behavior as 
you know, reaching out to people who I knew weren't good for me to reach out to. It's like this worry that if I don't stay connected to that thing that's bad for me, then I will never truly have what I want. But what I truly want is to realize that I am my own source. And I do want a family and I do want children and all of that too. But that's that's just a bonus. And so this inquiry has brought me very deeply within myself. And I'm very grateful for this process and I'm grateful that I can share it with you and so what happened was like okay now I have this deep feeling of wholeness like and honestly I can honestly say that whether I have children or not I will be happy I feel whole and I and I look at the world and I say well whether people have money or not or children or not or beauty or what we what you know what mainstream society calls beauty or not, or this or that or not. Like, people have their emotional stuff inside of them anyway. What they have on the outside, it doesn't matter. You could have the most beautiful family and it could be an amplification of your sense of worry because you worry about your kids all day or you have intrusive thoughts about stuff happening to them. All of your internal world is going to be projected in your external world, no matter what you do, unless you find out the parts of you that don't feel whole. The parts of you that don't feel whole. So use your mental chatter as a way to discover parts of you that don't feel whole and the mental chatter will stop. It will. Because if you're whole, like that movement of desire, there's still desire in you, but it doesn't make you feel lack. So there's no mental chatter. There's no need to validate your existence. So there's no mental chatter. There's no need to defend yourself. So there's no mental chatter. And so stop avoiding, first of all, feel, go into the feeling and find the source of the feeling, find the source, find the, the aspect of you that doesn't feel whole and intuitively bring a healing to that part. I am source. I am creator. I am whole. And of course, it's easier to do this if you meditate and you make contact with that field of infinite potential and you make conscious contact with it. So meditate in the void. And while you're in the void, feel your heart. Don't just use your head to go on a journey into blackness. Stay in that feeling of infinite potential and feel your heart. And that way, that vibration will make its way into all of these parts and they will no longer be screaming for your attention. Instead, the energy that, that was being used as mental chatter that was draining you will be re, will come back to you. And you'll have more energy to create and to share and to be happy and to play. And so look, my message is you can quiet your mind. Um, it's about finding the source of the noise. Don't just try to ignore it and snuff it out and observe it. Like that might work over like a really long period of time, but I'm giving you an efficient process so that you can not need to heal yourself forever and just move on with your life and be a creator. So I hope you have a good day.